Hey everyone, today we're doing an overview of exponents and exponential functions. We're reviewing three main topics, properties of exponents, scientific notation, and exponential functions. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more Algebra 1 videos. Let's go! First up, properties of exponents. For the first rule, when you see the same numbers with exponents that are being multiplied, you can combine the base number and just add the exponents to simplify. In our example, both values have the same base of 5, which is an important prerequisite to be able to use this rule. For example, if the base values were something like 4 and 5, we wouldn't be able to just add up the exponents. But in our example, we can combine the 5s into just 5, then add the exponents. So simplified, the expression is just 5 to the 5th. For our second multiplication example, let's kick it up a notch or two or three. The concept is the same where we're trying to multiply numbers or variables that have exponents. We'll just take each number and variable one at a time. Let's first multiply the numbers two and negative three. Next, let's simplify the x's. So we have x squared times x. And using that rule we talked about earlier, since they have the same base, we can combine the base into just x. Then let's add the exponents, which is 2. And it doesn't look like the second x has an exponent, but x is the same thing as x to the first power. So we'll add the two exponents, which is 2 plus 1. Finally, let's simplify the y's and add the exponents 3 plus 5. Once you start understanding the concept a little better, you can skip this middle step that we just did and just add the exponents in your head. But anyways, we'll end up with negative 6x to the 3rd, y to the 8th, which is our final answer. For our second property, we have division. When you're dividing numbers with exponents, and remember the base values still have to be the same, then we can subtract the exponents. Looking at our next example, let's copy down the 2, we're not doing anything with that. For the y, the whole point of simplifying is still to make it so that we only have one y value instead of 2. Because they have the same base of y, we can subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 1. Simplifying will end up with 2y squared. Alright, for the final example on this page, just like with example B, let's take the numbers and variables one at a time. Just looking at the numbers, 6 divided by 2 is 3. To combine the a's since they have the same base, we can subtract the exponents and get 3 minus 1. And for B, it's a little interesting because if we did the same thing as A and just subtracted the exponents, we would do 1 minus 3 and end up with a negative exponent value, which makes it more confusing than it actually needs to be. So when you're simplifying these fractions with a bunch of variables and exponents, you should actually subtract from the variable that has the largest exponent, if that makes sense. If you look back in the case of a, the exponent 3 on the top is bigger than the exponent 1 on the bottom. So we just kept the a on the top and did 3 minus 1 for the exponents. But for the variable b, you'll notice that the exponent is larger on the bottom. So we'll actually keep b on the bottom and still do 3 minus the other exponent, which is 1. And there's nothing to simplify for c since there isn't a c on the bottom, it's already simplified. So when we put it all together, our final answer is 3a squared c over b squared. Let's now move on to powers of powers. You'll also see numbers and variables that already have exponents being raised to another exponent. To simplify, you basically have to pseudo-distribute the exponent and multiply it out. Like with our other examples, let's just take things one at a time, but first let's quote-unquote distribute the exponent, which is 2. So we'll have 2 squared x squared 
and with the y, it's already to the third power, so we're going to use the rule and multiply the exponent since it's a power raised to a power. We'll have y to the three times two. Simplifying, we'll get four x squared y to the sixth. And that's our answer. For the next example, again, let's just distribute out the power of the power, which is two. Since our n is already raised to the third power, let's multiply the exponents so we get that n to the three times two. Continuing to distribute the two, we'll get m to the power of two. And we also need to multiply it to the denominator of the fraction as well. So we have to raise the two in the bottom to the power two. Simplifying, we'll get n to the sixth times m to the second over two squared, which is four. Now let's talk about these special cases. When you see a zero as an exponent, this just equals one because anything to the zeroth power automatically equals one. In example C, it initially looks like a power to a power, but we can first just simplify right off the bat because B is raised to the zeroth power, which just equals one. So technically this is just A times one, all raised to the power of three. Anything times one, it's just itself. So we have a to the third. And just simplifying here, I'm just gonna get rid of the parentheses. That's our final answer. Finally, you'll also see negative exponents. This just means that you'll take the inverse of whatever the base value is. So for example, if you see something like x to the negative two, this means that you'll take the inverse, which just means one over that value, so one over x and still keep the exponent, so we'll get one over x squared. Now, looking at our actual example, just think of this as the normal multiplication problem. Looking at our numbers, we just have three, so we'll write that down. Looking at our x's, let's add the exponents according to the rule. So we'll get x to the one plus two, We'll do the same things with y, where we'll add the exponents, but let's not worry about the negatives just yet. For z's, we'll also just do the same. Let's add the exponents and worry about the negatives later. When we simplify from there, we'll get three x to the third, y to the zeroth power, and z to the negative one power. To simplify even further, we'll get three x to the third. We just talked about that anything raised to the zeroth power is just one. So the y actually completely disappears. And z to the negative first power, we'll just take the inverse. So flip it so that the z is on the bottom. And that's our simplified expression. Shifting gears, now we're going to talk about scientific notation. This is actually a way for scientists and mathematicians to write super big or super small numbers. For example, if you have a huge number like 6.5 million, you can write it in scientific notation like this. The first number is always in between the values one and 10, and this last part tells you how many zeros to add, so basically how big or small the number is. Trust me, this is super useful. In fact, all of these numbers to the right are actual numbers that have meanings in the real world. For this first example, this is roughly how many people are alive in the world right now, at least when I last Googled it. In order to write this in scientific notation, we need to write the first part, which is that number between one and 10. To do that, I usually just put a decimal right after the first non-zero number. So we'll get 7.594. Next, we need to figure out the exponent, which tells you how big the number is and how many zeros you have. First, let's put the pencil where the decimal is, then count how many spaces you have to move to get to where it actually is. 
we have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. So our exponent in scientific notation is nine. And that's our answer. For our next example, again, let's just put the decimal right after our first non-zero number, and we'll just get seven. You'll notice that this is a super small number, and because it's a decimal, you know that in scientific notation, our exponent will be negative. To get the actual value of the exponent, you put your pencil again where the decimal is. Now we have to count how many spaces you have to move it to get to where it actually is, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. So the exponent is negative seven. And I forgot to mention, this is actually how long the wavelength of red light is. So super small. We have our final example which is already in scientific notation, so let's write it out into standard notation. Basically what we'll do is copy down the 3.72 and put our pencil where the decimal is right now. You'll notice that the exponent is positive 13, so because it's positive, you know we have to move it to the right by 13 spaces. Let's place zeros in all of these empty spaces and clean up the formatting. This is our final answer. It's equal to roughly how many cells are in the body, which is 37.2 trillion cells. That's a lot of cells. Our last topic for this video is exponential functions, which is basically the formula and graph of an equation where x is in the exponent. When we're talking about exponential growth, it means that you're starting at a certain number and then the number just skyrockets exponentially. These are often used in real world scenarios to model population growth and compound interest, which is really interesting if you're into money. I mean, who isn't into money? And when we're talking about decay, it's kind of the opposite where you're starting at a certain number, then it decreases super sharply exponentially. And this is used in models for exponential decay for radioactive stuff, like how long it takes for things to not be radioactive. Okay, for our first example, we know that it's an exponential equation because x is in the exponent. And we also know that it's a growth equation because this b value or the base of the exponent is greater than one. In order to graph these equations, really all you need to do is start plugging in numbers. I usually use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Let's plug this first one in together where x equals negative two. What we'll do is replace negative two for x in the original equation and try to figure out what the y value is. We'll get two times two to the power of negative two and remember what we learned earlier about negative exponents. So to get rid of the negative exponent, let's take the inverse. So it's one over two. And let's just carry over the power, which is two. Two times one over four is one half, which is our y value. Let's plot the point and move on to the next one and plug in x equals negative one. It gets a little repetitive, so I'm going to fast forward, but at the end you'll end up with a bunch of points that make up the exponential function. So once you get all the points graphed, connect the dots, and you have your graph. Alright, for our final exponential function equation, and also final problem for the video, let's graph this following function. We actually know that it's a decay function because the b value now is in between 0 and 1. Let's do the same thing where we plug in predetermined x values. So when we plug in negative 2 for x, we get this expression. It initially looks a little tricky because you have a negative exponent for something that's already a fraction. But let's just remember that the negative exponent just means that you need to take the inverse of the base. When you take the inverse of a fraction, you just flip the top and the bottom, so it just equals 2 over 1. That gets rid of the negative, and let's just carry the exponent, which is 2. When you simplify everything, the y value equals 8. We can't even plot this because it's off of the chart, 
but let's just continue to plug in the same numbers and we'll get these sets of points. Connect the dots and now you have your exponential decay function. Thanks for watching this overview of exponents and exponential functions. If this was helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more math videos. See you in the next one.